Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and let's get it going with this great clip. This is um, Andy Shackman from Miles Franklin, who is one of my sponsors. You can look in the top of the look in the description if you want some gold. Go to D, uh, use the code DAI Gold, and they've got a phone number and a website or, or an email address there where you can call or email to get the best prices. Listen to what Andy Sheckman says. He's a gold guy, keep in mind. The dollarization to move away from the dollar as the single world reserve currency and, and change. And either you accept and embrace and roll with the changes or you get rolled by the changes. So look, when I think about something like XRP, um, not knowing much about it, I would say that it presents an opportunity for people to become incredibly wealthy without taking a enormous risk because it's valued at a level that allows you to throw a moderate amount of money at it. And if it works, you make a fortune. Now, I don't know if that's what your intention is or not. You got that's a pretty, from the black swan capitalist. That is a pretty interesting take. Um, check this out. Bitcoin magazine. Imagine this. Where have we heard internet of value? Just in world's largest asset manager, BlackRock, says Bitcoin is creating a global internet of value. wonder where BlackRock would have heard of such a term as that. Well, Chris Larson literally, I think, invented that term uh, or that phrase. Then we've got these Ethereum guys that are saying that Ethereum is the internet of value. Look at this. With clever engineering, we'll be in a position where we can do 10 million transactions per second on Ethereum. It sounds insane, but this is Ethereum where we have the internet of regulatory capture and corruption. Where we're having 10 million transactions per second. And that's enough for every single person on Earth to do 100 transactions per day. And so we'll be in a position where the whole internet of value can be in one place with shared security. And we only buy into one security assumption, which is that Ethereum is secure. And this brings us to trying to grow the economic security of Ethereum. Right now, we are at $70 billion, which is extremely good. It's 29 million ETH times the price of I'll say, and we don't have to listen to anything else. I'll say this again. The disguised whales are everything. Because until you can show who the disguised whales are, until you can show who owns all the Ethereum or a large part of it, you can't talk about all this decentralization bullcrap. You just can't. Now, Vitalik Buterin, as Mr. Huber points out, he knows what the Internet of Value is. That's really what Ethereum is. You know, people talk, people talk a lot about things. Uh, talk about cryptocurrency 2.0 being like the internet of value. We're, no, we're not the internet of value. Ripple is the internet of value. We're an arbitrary processor for state transition functions. Ripple, or XRP, is the internet of value. Now, I'm not going to go into the Ripple Markets report. I just wanted to let you know that it came out. Um, still, to my knowledge, Ripple is the only digital, the only company in digital assets besides maybe Uphold that is completely transparent in what they do. You can see exactly where the XRP is, who owns it, and all of that. As opposed to doing what Joseph Lubin does, which is practicing whatever internal transparency is. I don't I still don't know exactly what that means, but that's what he that's what he does. Um, check this out. This is Eleanor Terrett. They're talking about Gary Gensler and what might happen to whether Gary Gensler stays or leaves in the coming years. Speaking of that, uh, I was looking at a tweet you put out. SEC Chair Gensler said Wednesday, absolutely plans to stay on Wall Street's top regulator should President Joe Biden win a second term in November. Here's my question to you. If Biden wins, okay, that's a, that's a slam dunk. Gensler stays in, most likely. What, about, what happens if we see Trump or a Republican come into the White House? Do you feel that Gensler would still be in the same position? Or do you think, because I don't know, I'll give you my opinion after, but I want to hear your opinion. What do you think is going to happen if we, if we get an alternative in the White House? Yeah, so just following up on the what he said about serving a second term if Biden gets into office again, 
Gary Gensler's term, he's, this is his second term. He's in his second term now. So right. he can only serve until June of 2026. So it would be, you know, only serving up until then if Biden got into office. So just keep that in mind. And then Biden would have to nominate somebody else and he could yeah. keep his position until the nomination is approved. Uh, if Trump comes in, then Gary still has that term. He has right to his term through June of 2026. Yes. Yeah. But what like what happens usually is that chairmen who are of the opposite party than the incoming president, they usually step down because they don't feel like they want to work with the new administration mm -hmm. or, you know, for, for other reasons they want to they want to move on with their careers elsewhere. Um, so we've seen that sort of pattern, I guess, with with other chairmen. But but the question I asked on Twitter is, was would Gary step down under Trump? I mean, I don't I, I don't think I've ever heard Gary Gensler like, you know, sound off about Trump exactly. I don't know if like they, yeah. they you know, it's not like they have this like famous rivalry, right? Where like where Trump is like mm -hmm. he always he always blasts off about Jerome Powell, but he Jerome hasn't Powell. actually said yeah. too much about, <laughs> yeah, he hasn't said too much about Gensler. So like, could they work together? I think it would be unprecedented. But then again, you've got him saying like, I love this job. I want to kind of, you know, and I would imagine he wants to finish what he started. He's, he's mm -hmm. come up with a lot of rules. There's a lot writing on his name. So it would be interesting to see if he, if he keeps that position, but then what Trump could do potentially is uh, demote him from chairman to make him a commissioner. So then he brings someone else in as chairman. But does Gary Gensler want to serve another two years as just a general as commissioner, a commissioner or does he yeah. want to step down and, you know, maybe go for aspirations that are higher? I don't know, but it'll be a great, it'll be an interesting thing to watch because oh you know, he has to go by 2026. And that's, I don't think, look, I think you're going to have to take that twerp by the neck and throw him out. Now, I don't think that Gary w would would be willing to deal with the demotion, um, that idea. I think he would resign before he let Trump demote him to a uh, just a regular commissioner. But I think that, that I think this punk is going to stay there as long as he can keep destroying the United States and helping China. I think he's going to stay. Now, um, Charles Gasparino, look what he said. Scoop, SEC. Bracing for major exodus among senior enforcement lawyers in its crypto assets and cyber unit, according to officials at major law firms who have been who have seen several resumes, Fox Business is withholding names to protect privacy. The move suggests that the bleed of senior staff under Gary Gensler's controversial leadership of the agency isn't letting up. More at 3:45. I looked for this video clip and I couldn't find it, but I'm hoping I can dig the clip up. I'd like to hear more about this. And it turns out Eleanor Terrett looked into it a little more and says, adding to this, we reached out to the SEC and one of the senior officials at Crypto Assets and Cyber Unit for comment and have not heard yet heard back. Gensler requested a record $2.4 billion budget for his agency this year in part to add an additional 170 staff positions, including its crypto cyber unit. So everybody's leaving the crypto cyber unit. So Gary's trying to get more money to hire more people that can be his toadies, people that have no integrity because the ones that do apparently are leaving. Gary needs more people like him with no integrity. John Deaton is, says he's not going to hire any of them. I can say with certainty, there will be no job offer coming from the Deaton law firm, despite the fact that I'm hiring. You see, unfortunately, the SEC enforcement lawyers, the Deaton law uh, for the SEC enforcement lawyers, the Deaton law firm requires one to always maintain a faithful allegiance to the law. Plus, we have a zero tolerance policy for intentionally lying to judges just to win a motion. Ooh, -oo. that's exactly what they've done. And the question is, has Gary been the one that has been instructing them to lie? Now, this is an interesting clip. Digital Bretton Woods 3.0 re, uh, reimagined by the bricks. Listen to this. The current lockdown will be over like soon and that your lives will be able to, will be able to all return to normal. Um, I was also very uh, pleased to um, hear the remarks by the uh, Vice Deputy Vice Chancellor at uh, Nelson Mandela University, which is the um, university located in Port Elizabeth, which is my hometown. So I'm feeling very much at home in this uh, conversation here today. It's a great uh, privilege and honor to uh, speak to you today uh, on behalf of the New Development uh, Bank. But let me say from the outset, 
said that we have uh, people like uh, uh, Srinivas, uh, Dr. Ben and others, Jaya and others who are uh, significantly more qualified than me to talk about central bank digital uh, currencies. What I would like to do uh, uh, today is to set this sort of context within which the central bank digital currency uh, movement is is expanding and has has expanded, and to also probe some questions that uh, will become of relevance, I believe, in the next uh, year or two or three uh, to uh, come. And I would like to also raise some fundamental questions about the historical, political, and economic moment that we are in in 2022. And by that, I'm not referring to the current uh, political juncture of the last uh, month or two. I'm referring to this period that we are living through, which is defined by significant changes in the global economic structure as we uh, know it. I think in, in setting the scene, <clears throat> the first comment <clears throat> that I'd like to make is that um, it is very important to start the conversation with where it all started. The defining moment of the global financial architecture is Bretton Woods 1944. In 1944, in a place called New Hampshire, in the United States, at the end of the Second World War, the core and essential architecture of the modern financial system was uh, designed by people like John Maynard Keynes, who represented the United Kingdom uh, Treasury, um, uh, John uh, uh, Harry Dexter from the United States, who eventually went on to become the uh, head of the World Bank, and all of those who were the founding fathers of the International Monetary uh, Fund. I mentioned that as the starting point because the United States dollar became the anchor reserve currency of the world uh, in 1944, the global payment systems that have evolved over the last uh, 80, 90 years have been anchored around the US uh, dollar. And the creation of the IMF as the body responsible for monetary and financial uh, stability is where we should start this uh, uh, conversation. Folks, what he just said is the reason I'm here. I'm not here for just random pump and dumps, random green candles, random, even random companies that are, that are building things. I'm here for the people that understand. Th this is about Bretton Woods 3.0. This is for all the marbles. This is, this is the reason I don't sit around and get upset based on what XRP is doing day to day and the price is down. Oh, and look at those other digital currencies. They're up and XRP is not. No, that's not what this is. This is for all the marbles and all of this, everything you're seeing. I don't care if it's, if it's Gary Gensler, if it's Ethgate, if it's what's going on in Russia and Ukraine and, and the tension around the world and COVID, I all of it has to do with this. Bretton Woods 3.0. This is for all the marbles. It's for all the money. It's the transition to the new financial system. And that's why everything, that's why so many things don't make sense in our world now. Because it is a power struggle. It is, it is digital currency wars that are going on right now. And that includes all of the people who are constantly out here on the X trying to scare you away from XRP. Who knows which ones of them are being paid to do so or whatever. I don't know. I'm not here to try to figure it out. But I will be locked on XRP. I will be locked on Ripple for all the reasons I just said. This is not an ordinary company. It is not an ordinary digital asset. And anybody that tell, tries to distract you away from that, you should question what their intentions are and what are behind their intentions because they're just flat wrong. Okay, now I'm going to go with DAIXRP.com and I'm going to show you what an ex-Rippler is, is saying. They keep talking about this big announcement and, and there's an update on it. Okay, so we're going to talk about that in DAIXRP.com. I'm, .com. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family. Go check out DAIXRP.com. Here we go.